Time now is nine minutes to eight. Now, when it comes to classic British cars, there are plenty of models which can make petrol heads go weak at the knees. The Aston Martin DBS, the Jaguar E-Type, the Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost. Ever thought about the humble Mini Metro? Yes, that's the car we can see behind us here. Uh, the rust-prone runabout turns 40 this year. While it wasn't universally popular at the time, the Metro still has plenty of fans. Before we meet a couple of them, let's get a bit of a history on the car. Stupid. Nigel, nice to see you. Oh, gentlemen, I'll see you're admiring the new colour keyed bumpers. Very smooth, very sheen. Pick up these brochures for the new Metro. It's, it's a lovely car. Lynn, and if you I, do. Lynn, I'm not driving a mini Metro. But, but you do have to make substantial savings. Lynn, I'm not driving a mini Metro. So it's taking a few people back seeing those images there. Let's speak to uh, Metro superfan Gerard Shaw. Stephen Lang is from the British Motor Museum. So uh, let's talk, Gerard, let's talk about you and your motor, first of all. <laughs> Share the love of the Metro with us right now. Tell us what's so special about it. Uh, yeah, so the uh, Metro you see behind me um, has been my first car. I've had it uh, since 2004 now. And uh, for me, it was um, like an 18th birthday present. So there's a, yeah, a bit of an emotional connection there um, with my family as well. It was brought to me by my parents and my grandparents. So, so um, hold on, Ger Gerald, when you got it for your 18th birthday, had you asked for a Metro? Yeah, yeah, um, it sounds bizarre. I did say to my parents I wanted a Metro. Because um, growing up, uh, my dad had lots of them as little runabouts, like little cheap runabout. And kind of all my memories growing up were always in a Metro, kind of all these little 80s bits and pieces you'd buy for it, all like the local motor factors. and. Um, yeah, it was just always in my head I wanted to get a Metro and kind of follow in these footsteps. So, given not, not everyone necessarily shares your love of the, of the car, and I think it's fantastic, you know, you have that, clearly have a bond with it. Uh, do you drive, does that a car that's on the road, if you drive it around, what kind of reaction do you get? Uh, yeah, this one lives a bit of a spoiled life these days, um, kind of comes out for uh, shows and events. But, yeah, when I do take it out, um, it's amazing, really. You get people kind of giving you thumbs up at traffic lights and... We get out of the petrol station, and I think if I had a pound for every time someone says, I have one of those, um, yeah, I'd probably be driving around in Aston myself now, to be fair. Um, it brings out good memories in people. I think um, there's obviously over two million produced, and lots of people had them as a first car or a little family runabout. So everyone seems to have a memory, and they always kind of come over and they'll tell you about a member of their family who had one, or maybe they learned to drive in it themselves. I think it is just that kind of... Uh, it's that emotional attachment that kind of brings out in people. Well, Stephen Lang, I mean, you've held this online exhibition uh, to pay tribute to the Metro. I mean, I mean, we've heard from Gerard there just the passion about it. Why do you think it resonates with so many people? I think we, we find we have over 300 cars in the museum and uh, people admire sports cars and they sort of dream of owning a vintage car, whatever they, they, they might aspire to. But actually, they spend all their time trying to find the car that they went to school in or learned to drive in. And there were two million metros. It was a bestseller. So it's part of people's everyday lives, going to work, going to school. Um, you know, some people used to call it a rust bucket. That really was a problem with the metro, wasn't it? I mean, uh, Gerard alluded to it as well, that it lives, his lives a spoilt life now, because it wasn't the most durable, shall we say, of cars. Well, you've got to put it a little bit in context with the other things that were around at the time. When it came out, actually, it was a, a really great car, spacious, economical, uh, and up with the best that the Europeans could um, to provide on the, on the market. Uh, but, of course, uh, anybody who knows anything about BL will associate with poor quality and that kind of thing. And it, and it got a bit of an unfair reputation, probably, given the number that actually made it onto the, to the road. And it's great now that people see it a little bit more fondly uh, as, as 40 years have passed. Uh, Gerard, tell us a bit more about you and your motor. So do, do you have a name for your car? 
Uh, no, mine's really original, Metty. So yeah, really original for that. But Me um, Metty. I run. Yeah. And just, do you uh, consider Steve. just go through it with me, Gerard? Do you consider Metty to be male or female? Do they have a sort of identity, a character? Um, I don't think either really, but I do kind of give it a little pat on the uh, back of the uh, the roof when I close up for the night, or if it passes the MOT, it's always kind of like, well done. <laughs> I talk, I, you know, I talk to my car too. I always talk to my car. I think it's a good thing to do. When it does well, when it's taking you on a long journey or passes the MOT, well done. You know? it's, it's a long established relationship, Gerald. Can I just check one thing as well? You know, you say you take it out for a ride and you get lots of reaction. Are your family yeah. as keen on being in it as you are? Um, my dad's driven it once, and um, yeah, I was kind of glad to get back in the driver's seat afterwards. But yeah, he's come out to shows in it with me as well. And again, I think there's a bit of parent pride when you come back with a, a prize from a show or something like that. So yeah, it's a real family thing. And um, my granddad did some work in the car as well. Sadly, he's uh, no longer with us, but it's again, like a, a little memory that I can always keep with me on that. That's the thing. Cars do mean things. You remember cars, I mean, Stephen, you remember cars in terms of life and what was happening at certain times and the, the metro it actually represented something in terms of the economy and political situation of the time when it first came out 40 years ago yeah it was sort of the great white hope for, for the uh, the end of british leyland really they were a little bit late to the party when it came to a new small car um, there was plenty of competition from france germany uh, and and in italy and uh, it, it turned into a real initial success for them. It sort of saved the company uh, at the time, and it got people driving British. Well, look, I absolutely, I, Jerry, I absolutely embrace the idea that you you uh, love your car that much, and it's, it's still knocking around. Funnily enough, I saw a um, I saw a three wheeler only yesterday. Robin Reliant. And there's something about seeing an old, you know, an older car, and it just makes you smile a little it bit. Does. I think it's it's great. So lovely to see you this morning. Gerard, and, uh, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Good luck with Metty, Stephen Lang as well. Thank you very much as well. Um, had loads of comments um, coming, coming through. Nick um, had a bright orange Metro he bought off from his granddad for £750. He called it great. He says, great times in the tangerine dream machine. I love the detail as well. Dave, David Clark got in touch. Mum had two of them. Mainly OK. I do remember one breaking down, travelling in Dorset. The pet hamster was in the car as well. Thanks this is the kind of things you remember, don't they? Yeah, thanks for that extra bit. I always wanted a Ford Capri. Do you remember those? Well, they were flash. They were so flash. Very professionals. Very professional. Um, um, you know, we were talking about the Mini Metro, it's 40th anniversary today, and lots of people have been getting in touch, and I, I wanted a Ford Capri. Um, and you said in the professionals, Bodie and Dor had one. A little bit of trivia for you, and thank you um, for this. Um, Erica said that Bodie and Dor actually started off using a Triumph Dolomites. Switch to the Capri as the Triumph wasn't fast enough. And then she sent me a picture of her Triumph. Yeah, and I think in the interim period between the uh, Dolomite and the Capri, there was an S Ford Escort, when the, which they used to go around in quite a bit. But the, the thing is, with Bodie and Doyle, no matter what they were driving, it was fast. It so it didn't really be. make any difference because they were in it. I am very impressed, and I very rarely say this, with you and your professional's knowledge. Well, I think let's, Cal... Let's leave that one there. It's uh, great, Yeah, isn't it's it? fine. I think Cal would look great in a Ford Capri. Uh, thank Did you, you know, I used to love... No, I didn't, but I used to love Starsky and Hutch. Remember the opening titles where they would jump onto the bonnet, go in, whack the light on top of the car? Those were the days. Yeah, but imagine anyway. how that would have been spoiled, Carol, that image you have there, if they'd been driving a Mini Metro. Mini Metro, yeah. I mean, It just wouldn't have been the same, would it? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I can't argue with that one. <laughs> what have you got for us, Carol?